Our Detroit Lions. Yes. Where do you think they were at? I know where they were at. Uh, so I, I hope that most people would say that they're still on that contenders tier. They're still, they're still, they're they're now putting that mix with the top top teams in both the NFC and the AFC to the, to compete for a Super Bowl next season. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that's why we've continued to since the end of the season, since we saw exactly what this team has, the consistency that they're bringing back, uh, not just amongst the coaches but among the players, and the fact that they were able to do this. Remember. Leading up to the trade deadline, there were a lot of people who thought that the Detroit Lions needed to do more to be able to maximize their window to even make it to an NFC Championship game. But clearly, Brad Holmes had a better pulse on what was going on, and he was, he did not tie this team's kind of future up into any type of uh, you know reactionary signing or trade or anything of that nature. He kind of stuck to his guns, and he decided, you know what? We are going to fix this thing or, or add to this thing but we're going to achieve this year. Yeah. And I absolutely love that belief. And what we're seeing from a lot of the national pundits and media as well is what we've been studying as well. This Detroit Lions team is still, still major contenders. Now, the way he listed it was the Ravens first, the Lions second, the Chiefs third, and San Francisco 49ers 49, uh, a fourth. I don't know if he put that in, in that particular order as I his ranking. I think I'm just going to go on a limb and say it was alphabetical, starting with Baltimore, okay. Detroit, uh, Kansas City, San Francisco, but we'll take it. We'll, we'll just we'll it. go with the second. We'll take it. And we'll also, I put it. it up. This was a Jeremy Fowler list. I made it on a little tier maker. I just put it out on this beautiful yeah. graphic that JB just put up. So there's your tiers uh, of th- these are the tiers that Jeremy Fowler put out there. So yep, for reference to people watching. Yep, yep. And I want to be able to read what he was saying too. The offensive line is among the league's best. The skill positions are loaded, and the yeah. defensive front seven is among the best against the run. Detroit is here to stay. Extending quarterback Jared Goff, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later, he says will be a top priority, but continuing to improve the secondary should be paramount. Wide receiver Amaran St. Brown and right tackle Panay Sewell are eligible for extensions, and the money allocated to those two could affect whether the team can bring back free agent guard Jonah Jackson. Hell. Still major contenders. What's your first thought as it relates to what you believe this Detroit Lions team needs to do to cash in on this national belief? Just keep doing what they're doing. Like, like, don't give in to the pressures, which which Brad Holmes, to his credit, he hasn't done that so far. But don't give in to the pressures of, of making a signing just because we all want him to go out and sign maybe a Legereus Sneed, maybe a, uh, a, what's, a Daniil Hunter. There are guys out there I've talked to. I would love for them to be in Detroit Lions gear. But Brad Holmes needs to make the decision that's best for this team, not just in 2024, but also moving forward, finding that balance of winning now, going for it. You got a chance. Mm. Like, we had a chance this past season. He, he hung tight. Maybe he gives a little bit more coming up, but the, the philosophy, the recipe of building with your homegrown talent, drafting well, and developing those guys, I just hope he sticks to that at his core. Yeah, and Dad with Tourette's asks, what's the list for? Again, Jeremy Fowler was going through from ESPN and ranking, putting different teams into tiers in terms of how he believed they would perform this season or what the expectations should be. And the Detroit Lions, he put in the still major contenders category. And he gave a list of things as to why he believes they're there. And I think one of the more kind of interesting aspects of this was everything that the Detroit Lions already have on the roster is what excites him about who he believes they're going to be over this next year. And then they have have the opportunity both in the draft where they have potentially, you know, at least seven draft picks, you know, give or take if they trade or something, as well as the cap space to be able to go and lock things down. I know in our next segment we're going to talk about potential free agent uh, target of Detroit Lions, cornerback Legeria Sneed. Boom. But with this Detroit Lions just kind of stay at this contender status, I do believe that they're going to have to do more than just run it back with the players right. that they have, man. Right. From your kind of expert opinion, from like what you've seen out of this team and where you think they you. need to go, I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it, man. Let me know what you think they need to do to cash in on this major contenders. Defense. Defense. They need to bolster this defense. They need to add – Many a pieces, both on the defensive line and in the secondary, to shore up that defense. That was the one thing that really held this Detroit Lions team back or or wasn't enough to get them over the hump. Granted, the offense fell apart in the second half of the San Francisco 49ers game too, but leading up to that point, it was the defense that made it tough. Made it tough for that offense. They had a formula that worked. It's I don't want to say they it, it didn't work because they they won twelve games during the season and they they were able to make up for a, a 
somewhat brutal secondary, secondary, especially in the second half, a defensive line in the first half of the season that wasn't getting much pressure on the quarterbacks, wasn't getting yeah. many sacks, so they made up for it. So defense has to be their number one priority, both in the draft and free agency. But the other part about it, too, they got to they got to reinforce their strength, which is their offensive line. Mm. They got to make sure whether it's through re-signing Jonah Jackson or Graham Glasgow or maybe you're extending Taylor Decker. Maybe I'm going to get into that in a little bit. You give Taylor Decker an extension to open up some cap space this year. He's got one year left on his deal. There are things they can do, but I think especially in the draft, going and bolstering that offensive line with some interior offensive linemen. To me, you just got to make sure your strength stays your strength. Yeah. And it's going to get difficult as you start paying people as Penny Sewell becomes the richest offensive lineman in NFL history. You got to find a way to spread that wealth. But making sure, especially if you're going to extend Jared Goff, that's 10 times even more of a reason why you got to make sure that offensive yeah. line is top five in the NFL.